pretending that it don't. It exists in the Arab Muslim world. So to all my Mu African Muslim brother and sisters, yes, you just had Ramadan Mubarak and I hope you had a wonderful time. But I remember going into Jeddah in 1974 to find out that in 73 and 74, they were killing African Muslims in the streets. So Nigeria in 1975 had to send the Nigerian National Guard there and send the Nigerian Boy Scouts to police the area where the African Muslims were staying. So we need to stop and take the blinders off of our eyes that there's an anti-African culture that pervades the governmental behavior, especially at the police level structure in all non-African country because all of them are engaged in stealing the wealth of Africa and all of them are engaged in using the brains of Africans in the diaspora, but don't want them to come together to enjoy the wealth of Africa for themselves or to use those brains to build African institu institution and industry for themselves. And that does produce at the most local level and at the level of the white individual, hatred and this, this attitude we call racism. And if you ask one of them to justify and say, well, why do you hate the Africans? Why do you have this racist view? You enslaved the Africans, but you are angry with them. They should be angry with you. You are the enslaver. You colonize me, but you're angry with me. I should be angry with you. It makes no logical sense except to justify the behavior of misusing the talents and the wealth and the resources of Africa to build Europe and European institutions across the world to sustain it and maintain it. That habit of behavior have become a culture, an anti-African culture. And it is that anti-African culture that we are calling racism. But racism is just one level of manifestation of the anti-African culture that pervades all Western and Asian and Middle Eastern capitals, all of them. And Africans need to stop pretending we only have one another. We only have the 54 nations in Africa, the diaspora in Europe, the Caribbean, Latin and English and French speaking Africans, and Brazil and Colombia and the other Spanish and Portuguese speaking African nations. That's who we have. We don't have any other friends culturally or intellectually or politically or militaristically anywhere else in the world. And so that gets manifested in America that if I see a black man, I don't have to say, excuse me, sir, um, your light on your car is broken or your license plate is missing. Do you have your driver's license? I walk up to the car and say that to a white man or a white woman. But when I walk up as a policeman to the car of a black man, I said, get out, get on the ground, hands in the air. And if you move too slow, you're a dead person. And we see it over and over, week after week, month after month, year after year, and we're still referring to it as racism. It's deeper than that. It is an anti-African culture that has festered and been bred into so-called Western civilization for hundreds of years. And it has been bred into that civilization so that they can rationalize and justify the robbery of Africa and her resources and the robbery of the talents and the intellect of the African persons, especially in the diaspora, without anyone saying anything. I think it was some man, where is he? I'd like to um, see, oh, I don't know what I did with it. But it was some British soldier or diplomat in 1863. Yeah, and I'm going to read this. He said, I've traveled across.